We are live. How about you, everybody? Welcome into the Auburn Live call-in show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live. Today is Sunday, April the 14th, 2024. We have a fantastic show for you. Why? Because this show is dictated by our callers, our subscribers, our listeners, our watchers. And they're fantastic. You don't believe me? Just give me about an hour and a half. I'll show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get to the phone lines as quickly as possible tonight, 701-779-9585. Go ahead and get called in. We'll get to as many as possible to answer your questions, to address your comments, to give you a little insight here tonight. Joining me is Mr. Cole Pinkston and Mr. Allen Head. How about you? How about you? How about, about you? Look at it. That was like a royal welcome. I was almost yeah. going to say touche after that was done. How about that? <laughs> and I didn't even watch the Masters, but I kind of felt very... Yeah. Prim and proper. Hey, yeah. you know, very masterful, very masterful. Uh, let's I, see. We've go ahead. Hey, Goal had a little. Uh, I don't know if you call yeah, it sabbatical. I'm, I'm glad to be back, man. I I miss it when I leave it. You you know what? We struggled without you, big dog. Very true. We struggled very without true. you. <laughs> I'm not gonna you lie. I, I I watched the show. Um, the next day after y'all release it, I was going. That's Philip Bleedy, that's uh, y'all. Y'all had n names right on the tip of your tongue. I was like, man, if I was there, I oh, could get real? that name. We yeah, could, we could get it streamlined. But <laughs> you never know how much you're needed until you're not there. You damn right, brother. <laughs> we uh, we did our best. We did our best. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of recruiting news to talk about. Speaking of Philip Bleedy, he's just, mm -hmm. uh, scheduled an official official visit for Monday through Wednesday. He is a big time Indiana defensive line transfer. Uh, who's on Long Street committed to A and M today? We can talk yep. about that. Obviously, let's see. Well, A Day wrapped up last week, so we've had a show since then. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. That's what this call-in show is for. So uh, we'll get to the phone lines before we do. If you're in or around Auburn, Opelika, Lee County, you're looking to buy a house, looking to sell your house, get rid of the old, in with the new, and out with the old, or something like that. Out with the old and in with the new. You know how it is. Call Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group, 334-704-4442. A lot of fours in her number, but she is a five-star realtor. Don't believe me, just ask me. I will tell you, she's a five-star realtor. She's Man, you wouldn't believe the things I've seen her do this week. Fantastic. Uh, she's really good. I, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And if you are, call me and tell me, and I'll, I'll call you a liar. I'll call it to your face. You know what else you wouldn't be disappointed with? That addition of J.P. Pegues, point guard uh, from Furman to Auburn. I mean, that was a big piece that we didn't talk about. I thought you were talking about Jessica. Mm, no, I was talking about J.P. Pegues, but I wouldn't be disappointed with Jessica. Ad. I wouldn't be disappointed with Jessica either. Let me finish my ad. <laughs> Jessica Andrews with the Talons Group. Give her a call, 334-704-4442. Tell her we sent you. J.P. Pegues. <laughs> See, I thought you were done, brother. You took a nice pause there. I was like, all right, this is a great time for me to well, say. I'm working, suspense. You know, I was working suspense. on my transitions here, Jeffrey, and just you, you shot me that. down. I was in the back like, did he finish that ad or might I just go deaf for a minute? Shit, bro. I thought he finished, but it's on me. I'm the idiot in the show, so we're good. Speaking <laughs> of, yes, forget the football for a second. I thought that was huge news for Auburn basketball, the transfer commitment and subsequent signing of J.P. Pegues, the point guard from Furman who averaged 18-5. and five. I believe this past year he has one year of eligibility, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, one year of eligibility left, but that links up quite nicely with what you have returning on your roster. When you think about the potential of Janai Broom returning, you have Chaney Johnson for one more year into the system. Obviously, Chad Baker Mazzara, Denver Jones. So you're talking about potentially having an all-senior starting five lineup, all guys that started at either mid-major, FCS, or D2, which is a very interesting transition for Bruce. You think about a couple of years ago in that team that went – to the final four by comparison now. But I think what a lot of coaches have realized is being older in the tournament really helps you look at UConn and Danny Hurley and the recipe that they've put together. And they combine that with like Bruce has tried to do some McDonald's all Americans. You got two all-star freshmen coming in that should mix quite nicely with what you've got returning on your roster. So massive signing because if, I mean, let's be honest here, point guard play cost you in postseason this past year. Oh yeah. I, I mean, look, it, Chad Baker's situation was what it was, but I feel like if you had, you know, a double-digit score from point guard that could have controlled the flow of the game, Auburn wins that game against Yale, and you're in the second-round matchup against San Diego State, and you're probably in the Sweet 16. 
Let's see what the folks want to talk about. That's certainly noteworthy, but we'll get to the phone line. Zach in the back came to the front, I'm guessing, for a reason. Yes, and I, I think we all know who the first caller is going to be. Oh, well, the, we the star Kevin. of the show. The star of the show. Kevin Our leadoff Wilmer. hitter, Kevin from Wilmer. He he went cut. Kevin from Wilmer, Alabama. <laughs> Coming in What's hot, that? Kevin. Yeah, he sure did, dude. You got some questions tonight, Kevin? Yeah, I think uh, Cam Coleman will have 18 touchdowns this year. 18? My Lord. <laughs> Somebody was going to have 20 last week. Weren't they? Okay. Yeah, Bryce Kane will have 20. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he's he's going to have a breakout year. <laughs> Yeah, you right, could so say that. You got you got Bryce Kane scoring more touchdowns than Cam Coleman, Kevin. I like it. I like that's a hot take, big dog. And Perry Thompson will have have a couple of them. Okay. I, I can get them over that, I think. Definitely. Oh, for sure. Kevin, do you think Perry Thompson will have more than four four or five? Building that suspense, see, Alan. <laughs> he is. See, look, he Kevin knows how to do it, right? Hey, you think we get the Alvin Henderson? That's a good question. Alvin Henderson with some news this past week as well. Four star in state <laughs> running back chose Penn State over Auburn and others. Um, do I think Al, I, I did leave my prediction on Auburn? I, still, I did as well. I did as well. Still, would be surprised if he doesn't. I'm, and I, this is a great topic of conversation. And I think I was going to get to this on the recruiting show. But here, here's one thing, Kevin. I want to talk to to everybody about running back recruitment under Hugh Freeze. This was a concern for Alvin Henderson. The concern was everybody can name five or six stud wide receivers under Hugh Freeze that went on to the NFL. We do it all the time on this show. Sure. Everybody can name multiple quarterbacks that had de developed and went on to the NFL or had a lot of success in college under Hugh Freeze. Can anybody name one running back? I could. I no. I said but, no, and you know what the response was? Neither can I. Yeah, I mean, there, there was nobody that, that made it huge from him. <laughs> Maybe the only one is um, – is it Walt yes. Walton? See, I'm having to think of it. Walton is one, and then there was another one that played for the Giants. I'm trying to think. Uh, I think he was with Freeze. Either way, you're right, Jeffrey. There's. It's about the receivers with Freeze, and that's why I, I've been saying on the board, and I put up a, you know, here's some names to watch for the portal. I, I, I think they're going to go for some receivers, even though people might be like, oh, we should be good at receiver. No, I, I don't think good enough is good enough. For You're probably going to lose, lose a couple. Wait, I, yeah, I, I would put the number at two. I, I think they're going to lose two out of the wide receiver room. But back to the question on Alvin, and I think that's a fair – like if if somebody else from another team is introducing that or if that's just Alvin's camp that has those questions. No, it's definitely other teams. Yeah, it, I would – I mean, understood and fair. But what I would – my counter argument, if I'm Hugh Freeze and I'm hearing that, I took with what I had at Ole Miss, okay? When I got to Ole Miss, I found a market that was untapped in wide receivers and tapped into that and worked my offense around it. I think what you saw last year as far as the run game was concerned showed you enough that they can feature a running back in that offense. And I promise you with the caliber of running back that he could attract to Auburn, he will absolutely put one in the NFL. But the proof is in the pudding, right? And so they need to – when Alvin said, I need to see some things out of Auburn this year, yep. that dovetails in exactly with what I was told. It, I'm, I'm with you, Jeffrey, because I heard the same thing. Let's see what happens with Jarquez Hunter. Let's see what happens with Damari Austin this year. Do we crack 1,000 yards? But, Cole, back to you, you know what I mean? Like, other than that, yeah, I think they're absolutely going to go into the portal and snag two wide receivers, whether one of them is a – I'm interested to see what kind of body types they're going to pluck because I think – You've got some erasers on the outside, like Cam Coleman is an eraser, right? Like he can make wrong, right? I think that's what. Yeah. What, right. You know I mean, but you also have some run after the catch guys, and, and so it's going to be interesting to see the blend they bring in because I think our best transfer portal pickup 
is a wide receiver who's a run after catch type guy. So that's going to be interesting to see. I think you, you have the chance now, now that you have Robert Lewis in there, they think Sam Jackson can help in some capacity. You know, you have a couple of pieces now, whereas you're not trying to build the entire room from scratch. You can actually go after a body type you like. I think even though they did, uh, Jair Shorter, Shane Hooks, yeah, they, they kind of fit the description of a body type that Freeze has liked over the years. But, you know, it, it was it wasn't like they were going after a top guy. You knew that when it was happening. It felt like they were going to be good. Don't get me wrong. Better than they were anyway. Um, but now I, I think you got enough in there where you can sit back and go, let's be maybe a little more picky this time. I like this guy, and maybe that's about it. I don't have this big board of receivers in the transfer portal. I, I got a couple I like, and then we'll see what happens from there. And I think they'll get one or two, like you said. Back to Kevin's question as far as Alvin is concerned, I feel like if, if Jarquez Hunter, if Damari Austin, if Jeremiah Cobb, if those guys have great seasons, I think that's going to be – and Auburn still has a spot for him. That Okay. It, now we're getting to the other part of what I wanted to talk about because there were a couple guys that have been offered recently, and I really right. like their tape. And I think Auburn likes their tape too. Kid by the name of Todd Robinson out of Valdosta, Georgia. Fantastic athlete, electric in the open field. And a guy by the name of Trey Kinkle, who Jeffrey broke that scoop on the board. I mean, verified 10, 300 meter dash. And when you watch his tape, I mean, he is an absolute home run hitter from any part of the field. I think he averaged 12.5 a carry against good competition in Mississippi. So, two Todd Robinson backs. kid. Yeah. Now, he's, I've been trying to get in touch with him for since he got offered. He's a running back. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. He's he's a running back playing quarterback. Correct. In high school, but but speedy guys, and one of the concerns, and objectively speaking, on Alvin Henderson was his top well, end speed. Yeah, I, I think that's a valid concern as well. Look, I think Alvin's a blue chip kid. There's no question about it. He would have been a valued piece in this class. And the difference between him and the two guys that I just talked about is the fact that Alvin's been a name on the recruiting circuit for the last two years, and these kids just pop. So he's got a certain level of cachet that comes with him. And there's an attractive part of that when you're building a class, right? Because they attract other recruits. But if we're talking about on-the-field production, the two guys I just talked about, if you did the Pepsi challenge and closed your eyes and didn't know the names, I guarantee you, you walk away from that and you think they're ex equally as good, maybe not, if not better, in my honest opinion. I mean, Kevin, I, I, go I'm ahead, Chief. I'm sorry. I was going to get back to Kevin, make sure we got him. Is he still on, Zach? No, not on okay. anymore. Well, hey, Ke look, Kevin's always getting a start at Big Dog. He, he, <laughs> he does. He's not he does. worthy of the first 15 to 20 minutes of the show. Cole in the background said Jordan Wilkins, and I remember that name vividly. Yeah, because I mean, I, I thought he was coming to Auburn at one point. Yeah, he was committed to us. Was he really? I can, I can, I can see yeah, his face. He's committed to Luke before Luke and uh, it, before Chiz got fired, huh. and so then we traded. Tennessee, wasn't he? Yeah, we traded backs in that class. So Peyton was actually committed to Ole Miss. Oh yeah, uh, Peyton Barber. Yeah, yeah, Peyton Barber was committed oh. to Ole Miss. Jordan Wilkins was committed to Auburn. Chiz gets fired. Jordan Wilkins immediately decommits, and then Gus flips Peyton Barber on National Signing Day to go along with Carl Lawson. Same school. Same school. Milton, Milton Alpharetta. Yeah, well, Jordan Wilkins, I mean, just that's the only guy you can really name. So, you know, that's that's part of recruiting. Other schools are going to say, look, he had one guy that was worth anything in the pros. So, and I, I, I thought it was very telling. I think two days before his announcement, I think it was an interview with Chad or Steve or somebody, but or maybe it was Dukes. It was Dukes. Yeah, he said – I, I, he, I mean, everybody knew from that interview it was going to be Penn State. Yeah. This 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 class already has a quarterback committed and two running backs committed, so you knew it, 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 we knew who it was. Uh, and but he said, "I need to see something from Auburn on the field. I need to see more from Auburn on the field." And uh, that was kind of the, yep, yeah, all right. Well, I, I know where things is. I will say this though, even leading up to the announcement after that interview, uh, there was still some. Confidence in Auburn that he was coming. So don't 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 think Auburn didn't want this or didn't push this kid because they really wanted him, and they still do, as far as I know. <clears throat> so definitely going to be keeping a, uh, an eye on Alvin Henderson. Maybe not my pen, but certainly an eye on him moving forward. All right, Zach, appreciate you, Kevin. 
Hey, do we do, you have, do we have a personal question of the week? POW Q is silent. Mm. I had a suggestion. If anybody doesn't, no, I didn't. I didn't have one. Somebody on the board posted this. Does uh, do you, do you? Cole doesn't shave. Zach doesn't shave. J, uh, Allen. <laughs> <laughs> put, put put 50 cent in that bucket baby you, you caught yourself so we're only gonna go with the 50 piece 1450 okay yeah there you go so do you shave in the sink with 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 you know a, a traditional uh you know the barbasol yeah or do you shave in the shower without no bro i, I'm, I thought I'm, only I'm, women shave in the shower and i don't I, mean their face i'm i'm with you bro <laughs> Nah. Up until that last line, I'm with you. <laughs> their legs, their legs. There you go. And their stash. They didn't get that stash. Mm. <laughs> oh, one of my girlfriends back in the day had to keep it. She had, she had, a, she had I, to get that high and tight up there. It did. <laughs> She had to get that J head. Hey, yeah, there there you go. Go. that's the haircut. She had to put a little fade up in there. <laughs> all right. So if look, all I care about is if you do shave in the shower, I'd be curious to know. Other than that, keep us going, Zach. Zach, Zach I, are you electric razor? <laughs> do, do you yeah. touch it up with the electric razor? Well, usually I just go to my barber and he touches it up when Ooh, I get there my you hair. Go. You there get you lined go. up. Lines it yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. It makes it look good. Duke said I can go get lined up. Oh, did he? Uh, yeah, he said hey, he got the barbershop for me. I got to go. <laughs> Listen, dude. <laughs> Duke's get some scoop at that barbershop. It'd be worth it. I bet he does. I, 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 I bet he does. Oh, man. Um, nine, six, two, one. You're live. Who are we talking to? Where are you calling from? What's up, guys? It's Aces Full One from Auburn, Alabama. Hey. I didn't hey, think cool. you were actually going to call. He said he was going to call. I didn't either. Me. I I liked I it. It's not good. I can look for I, it. I'm gonna call, man. I got some, I got a I got a good one tonight. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I, listen, I know the staff thinks they're gonna hit on one of the big three with Lacey, Juju, and uh, Longstreet. I know the sources are probably saying that. What What's the contingency plan if we don't hit on anybody? Because I think at that point we probably shouldn't even take a high school quarterback. Hmm. I, I can see the argument being made that 2026 is maybe more important than 2025, and I got to thinking about that. So, Aces, to be honest with you, I don't know that there is a contingency plan, at least not yet. I mean, I know we we, we know Cutter Woods, and there's some other guys that we Auburn has offered. Mm -hmm. I do really want to uh, emphasize, man, people outside of Auburn, think Auburn might be the team to beat for Juju Lewis. Yeah. I can't – I would say that I've heard similar things, Jeffrey. And it's so, hard for me to wrap my head around. Wild. So, yeah, me too. So, just chill. I'm not talking to you, Aces. Okay. Although, probably should sometimes. Okay. But I, I'll say this again, man. I really – if – I really feel like Auburn will get one of those three. I do. I do too. And for the contingency, I think they're going to take a quarterback in every class. I was going to say, Jeffrey, look, I think in today's era of the transfer portal, you're losing Peyton Thorne already, right? So now you're down to three quarterbacks. Even if you decided you wanted to bring in a portal quarterback, there's nothing that keeps Hank or Holden from jumping into the portal. And now you're back down to three again. And that's just not satisfactory depth in the SEC. And so you might as well take a project if that's what you're going to call it. If you can't get one of your top three quarterbacks, you find one that you had that has traits that you really like, that you think you can develop and sink your teeth into. And you invest in that player because you have to have security plans. There are teams that roll through quarterbacks that get injured. I mean, I think we've seen multiple teams have several quarterbacks injured in the same season. Hugh Freeze experienced it. I mean, I think he played with quarterback number four when he was up at Liberty. So you have to have adequate depth, and so you have to take one every year. I understand people's thought process of if we can't get one we want, then just screw it, man. Don't take anybody at all. It's not worth our time, our NIL money, anything else. But there are always developmental guys. You see them every year at lower levels that end up getting into the portal later on. If you can identify one of those guys, build it, build that relationship up and, and, and develop him, then there's no harm in doing that either. But you, I'm with you, Jeffrey. You got to take one every year. 
especially in the day and age of the transfer portal, because you just can't predict who's going to be on your roster year to year right now. Speaking of quarterback recruiting aces, you saw Juju is set to visit Auburn, I think, the second week in June. I think he's going to Georgia. Yep. I think, um, so I, I, my my quarterback recruiting focus will be on Juju. And I heard from somebody this morning who, again, Well, I, was not, I think uh, the class is going to be great. I think we're hitting needs that we need regardless of quarterback. But sure. my thought process is that we need that guy to fill that space in even though the class will be good. You know, we need guys on the trenches and the line of scrimmage, and we're doing that. So that's great. But we also, yep. I feel like we also need to fill that gap in. And, I, and you got to think about what Juju Lewis would do for this class. Think about what he would do for the wide receiver class. Think about what he would do for people wanting to play with him. Running backs, offensive line. I mean, he is a magnet. i tell you what. Uh, I know what I've been hearing on Juju. I think it's about the same as what you're hearing, Jeffrey. And – I put in my my article yes on Saturday. If I if you told me this a month ago, what I'm hearing right now, I'd have laughed. Mm -hmm. I, I never I never once saw Juju Lewis and Auburn being a thing. And you know what? I, I'm gonna kind of stick with that because sure. sometimes we hear things from people and we get things from sources, and it's not anything against the source. You just hear it and you go, "We'll see." Yeah. And that's how I am right now with this one. I, I actually have a funny feeling about KJ Lacey. That's where I am as of today. Funny positive, funny negative. Yeah, positive. I, I have a okay. I feel like uh I've seen he and I've seen KJ Lacey and Ken Austin interact enough to where I'm like something's there. I, I really believe that. I believe there's something there. And and I do believe and Cole, you might have been with me when this was said, so I'm going to say we. But there was, again, somebody completely away from Auburn. I don't know that he's – I don't know that KJ ends up at Texas. Well, there's that too. Uh, I, I mean, uh, this so is what I'm saying is like he says all the right things and, and you're going, oh, man, it might be a tough pull for him. I honestly believe if Auburn turned their attention to KJ Lacey, they could get him. And that's why I think – that's why I've said – I thought Auburn was going to get at least one of these three guys. It's becoming like super rare for a guy to stay committed that long and then sign with that school. Right. It's almost like a scary Even thing. Even at quarterback. Guy, That's what at quarterback too, yeah. I mean, when a guy commits early to your school, it's almost like, all right, well, that's great. But, you know, that's the way it is now. I mean, holding on to a guy for that long is ridiculously hard because – it's not like the transfer portal and, and, and tampering or whatever. They, they can do it without having to hide it. <laughs> so uh, you're committed or whatever, but sure, we're going to recruit you like you're not, and we're going to give you offers like you're not. So that's – you got to hold off, hold that off the entire time, and that is – that's a tough task. I, I'm with you, though. I've heard some things that say maybe K.J. Lacey doesn't end up at Texas. I, I don't know that for sure right now, but again – it's April. <laughs> we got eight months to go, man. I don't think people realize that right now. Well, and just like it was abundantly pointed out by other schools about Hugh Freeze's track record with running backs, if you're recruiting against Texas and you're recruiting K.J. Lacey, do you really want to go sit behind Arch Manning, who's going to be there for a substantial period of time, if you have any ambition on getting in the field on the field early? And that's not it, that's not taking a shot at Texas or Sark or anybody else. That's just being very realistic in, hey, this is a kid that's he's not one and done. Okay, this is a kid that's going to be there for a couple of years. So, if you, yeah, I mean, in Auburn's situation, you're graduating your starter. It's going to be a wide open competition. I would tell you that Texas is not going to be a wide open competition. That Arch Manning is going to be penciled into that spot the second that this, their starter leaves for the NFL after this season. Aces, are you a uh, shaving the sink or shaving the shower? He hung up. <clears throat> Thanks. Aces, get in the chat, man. Go ahead and give us an answer on that. Six, seven, eight, two. You're live. Who are we talking to? Where are you calling from? Uh, This is Braden from Athens. Braden from Athens, Alabama? Yeah, I got uh, – my question was, like, who the QB target would be now. But y'all are saying 
uh, talking about Juju, I heard. Yeah. And, um, but I want to get y'all's opinion on the quarterback situation for next year because, like, are we – do you think we end up promoting one of the guys that are currently on the roster, or do we get, like, the dude out of the portal next year? Are you saying next year as in 2025 season? 25. Okay. So you're saying Peyton Thorne's gone. You've got Henry Brown. You've got Hen- uh, Holden Gurner. You've got Walker White and whomever they sign in the 2025 class. Right. So do you think they yeah, go out and get a, a bridge guy? Go to the portal. Go go to the portal. Get, like the get your starter. Guy. Yeah. Uh, this is a great topic of conversation. Yeah, it is. And – well, do you think it has to do with the development of those three guys? Who yes. Number two is. Yeah, I mean, if you land Juju, I seriously doubt you're going to go to the portal. I'm going to be honest with you because you're going to expend some NIL resources and you're also going to make some promises. That's true. You know what Very I mean? True. So I, I, I do not see a portal target if he's the quarterback you land in this class. Completely agree. KJ Lacey, different deal because I don't think you're making those same promises. Um, and I, I don't think you want to waste a year of Cam Coleman after this season. Like when you have that wide receiver core coming back that you're going to have and how attractive that would be to dangle in front of a, a transfer quarterback along with a mature offensive line, I think you would have your choice. Now, it's expensive. You better be ready to pay up because you're talking around a million dollars or more. Mm-hmm. But if you get the right one, with what you've got on the outside coming back and what you've got in your backfield, you're potentially talking about being in the playoff. Well, here's the, uh, here's the reality of quarterback situations at a place like Auburn and our, you know, I call it microwave society type deal. We got going on here. If a guy like Walker white, who was a top 10 quarterback, no matter what site you looked at, I think he was pretty much top 10 in all of them. Consensus. Yeah. If he does not, in year two, make some kind of leap towards that job, people think it's over. That's it. Not going to work out with him. Um, so I think this is kind of what Braden might be thinking here. I, I don't want to, you know, put words in your mouth or anything, but hey, if Walker White's not the guy next year, who is it? Because Hank Brown's already spent basically because <laughs> he's already had a year and he's not the guy. Why is he not the guy? I don't think it really works like that, but that's the way it's viewed today. Does that make sense? 100%. Jeffrey, go ahead. I know you were about to say something. No, I, I think I think you I think you hit the head on the, the head on the nail. Definitely <laughs> hit the head on the nail. Yeah. Yeah. When it, it's I think Braden, I think a lot of it will depend on who who signs in the 2025 class. I think if it's Juju Lewis, you're absolutely you you've already promised yourself out of that situation. And, and you almost hope you don't have to. When you hope one of these guys, you, you, you hope one of these, whether it be Brown, Walker, Henry, I mean, uh, Holden, is making a case, is giving you hope. Yeah. Giving you confidence going into the 2025 season. Because, like, you, I think we've been saying this for a long time 2025 lines up for Auburn. That's yeah. the year. That's Hugh Freeze's third year, system wise, scheduling wise. That's the first year that I'm going to have my floor at nine to ten wins every season from there on out. Correct. Or at least that's the goal, anyway, right? Sure. Right. Yeah, I mean that, 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 that's that, my expectations. Yes. Right. That, that's the goal of where you want to live. But no, I it, I'm with you, Jeffrey. I mean, I, I think Juju Lewis, just like the Raul uh, Raiola kid last year that went to Nebraska. Nebraska was very much in the market for a transfer quarterback. The second they flipped that kid from Georgia, they were no longer in the market for a transfer portal quarterback. I think the same thing will be true of Juju Lewis if that's who Auburn ends up with. And to do that, to land Juju Lewis, you got to beat Georgia and you got to beat SC. In my opinion, those are the two that you got to beat. Uh, and it's just going to be proof in the pudding for me, man. It, again, heard some wonderful things, but beating Georgia for a kid they want. If Georgia truly wants Juju Lewis, that will be something I have never seen at Auburn because I cannot remember a kid other than Montrevious Adams that we – well, take that back, Derek Brown, that you went toe-to-toe with Georgia with and beat them. How about the balloons on that hey. one, big dog? <laughs> Does Owen Papo count? 
You think? Throw yeah, away. Owen counts for sure because they definitely wanted him. Yeah. I, so tell them at three guys. Okay. Well, Tank, but they came back on Tank. Yeah. A, a handful of guys. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah we're talking the point is made. You, you don't. Ninety nine percent or ninety five percent of the time, you're going to lose that battle. Rarefied air, right? Like when you're talking about the number of wins that Georgia's got in those competitions and the number of wins that Auburn's got in that position, that is rarefied air for Auburn to live in. So I, I see that the same way I saw Perry Thompson last year. Until it gets to the point that I can say, you know, I've got enough, not just anecdotal evidence, but I got enough in front of me to say, yeah, man, it's happening. Because I did, I did the same thing with Perry. I was like, nah, sure. I, 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 I'm, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not I'm, there I'm, yet. I'm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rarified air, folks. Put That's that one in for me. Yeah, I, put did, that, I just wrote it down. Put, put that, that one in the, in the J head door. <laughs> there you go. Rarified air. Uh, yeah. All right, good stuff, Braden. Appreciate you, big dog. Three one, three four. You're live. Who are we talking to? Where are you calling from? Hey, man. This is Lee Carter from Bruton, Alabama. Hey, oh, Lee Carter. I know Lee Carter. Lee How Carter. About you? I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Uh, I guess my question tonight, because I was along with the Long Street stuff and looking at who we had coming up, but since that's been discussed, I want to talk about our defensive line. There we go. And All at right. A Day, other than the couple of big plays, you know, you could say that the defensive line looked really, really good. And I guess my question is, like the old saying, is our line really improved or is the O-line kind of slipping or is it just one of those things where it's A-day and don't take it too serious? So I'm just kind of curious about that, and I'm going to hang up and let you Hey, Lee, hold on, Lee. Just wanted to say love the show. Glad I got to call in for the first time. Lee, you still with me? Lee? Yeah. Lee's total barbersaw guy in the sink. Oh, 100%, dude. Oh, man, definitely a barbersaw guy, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> I, I hear you, big dog. He ain't no jail guy either. He's he's, he's old school <laughs> barbersaw. Question for you. No, you do, no, W.S. Neal or T.R. No, Miller? Like, so straight, straight foamy in your hand. Yeah. There you go. He's a, he's a T.R. Miller guy. He's a T.R. Uh, Miller guy? I think. I think. <laughs> That's right. There you go. He's a, he's a Jamie yeah. Riggs guy. Jamie Riggs for sure, yes. There we go. There you go. Because I think I threw Jamar. All right, I'm going to hang up and listen, guys. All right, Lee, appreciate you being here. Appreciate Lee. The WSNL was Jamar Travis and uh, yes. Jared Jared uh, Cooper. Jared Cooper, offensive lineman back in the day. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Mm-hmm. I remember those guys. Uh, okay, Lee, and this is, a, this is a, the the damned if you do, damned if you don't. A day. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, if somebody's looking good, then somebody else is looking bad. I think it's probably a combination of all of what Lee just talked about. I think you had various matchups where it was advantageous for the for the defense. I think you th- did things schematically on offense that you didn't do last year, and you're still working out the kinks on a cohesive unit because there's nothing that's it, that's more team centric than offensive line play. Like that that group has to be in sync with one another and completely understand. Uh, and be on the same page. And so I also think that some guys are making some adjustments that struggled a little bit. I thought Dylan Wade struggled a little bit in the spring game. I watched him. I thought his technique is still coming along as far as hand placement and things like that at the the interior position by comparison. You can tell he felt more natural at tackle last year than he's feeling at guard right now. Mm. Uh, But I think he's going to be good. I think once he gets some of those things down, he'll be fine. Um, but, I mean, give the defense credit, but it's A-Day, man. Like, I just – I trust enough of what I heard as far as them needing additional bodies that I'm not going to read too much in that situation and expect the defensive line to go out there and be all SEC next year, not unless they're going to add some serious playmakers in the portal this spring cycle. Cole? Yeah, I'll tell you what, upon further review, that's why I do these play breakdowns, man. I, I have to do it. I got to do it so I can talk about this. And, um, boy, it just, every time I do it, it just takes narratives that are out there and it just, it just crushes them, man, because there's things going on that you don't know about. 
and I don't know about when I'm watching it and trying to break it down in real time. The exact same thing that I was worried about, I see on tape several different times in the first half of this game. Interior D-line getting rolled off the ball. <laughs> it happened. Problems were the running backs sometimes, which was very, you know, again, look, this is an A-Day game. This is not that big a deal. Things like that are going to happen. It's a practice. Scrimmage, right? At, at, a scrimmage at the end of a practice. It's a practice. That goes for every other spring game in America, even though it's getting all blown up on Twitter and different schools, whatever. Listen, um, I still saw the same problem. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought when Auburn's offensive line was comboing, that means two different guys are trying to block one guy on defense. Yep. They're still rolling guys off the ball. There's Auburn doesn't have a guy that takes up a double very well, and, and that's exactly what teams are going to do to him. Now, the edges, um, uh, Jalen McLeod, Keldrick Falk, now you're getting stronger there. That's where they were making a lot of run stops. That's not what we're talking about here when we're saying Auburn needs defensive line. We're not talking about another Keldrick Falk. We're not right. talking about another Jalen McLeod. We're talking about a nose guard, somebody who takes up that double. Right now, they don't have it. They got to go get one. Philip Blighty, or however you say his last name, that's going to be on campus Monday. That's a transfer D lineman from Indiana. He's more of a three, really. Can play yeah. a little nose. But again, it's the nose and the three. Got to fill up at those spots. Got to find somebody that can be a guy there. I don't see a guy there right now. Trill Carter's going to be okay. Jason Jones is going to be okay. Um, but they're not superstars. And you're probably not going to get a superstar, but you got to get somebody that can take a double. Got to. Or it's going to be a long season. I said Bleedy earlier because that's what you called him, Cole. Well, now you're saying Blighty. Um, I don't know. I, I That's because I have I no clue. <laughs> Cole, let me ask you a question. On your film review, yeah. did, you wa- did you watch any of Jeremiah Wright in that game? Um, yeah. I mean, the offensive line as a whole, you know, I, I think I've notated him a few times. I caught a couple different clips and he looks like a legitimate bouncer that belongs at the supper club. Like he, I mean, <laughs> he was bullying some folks out there, dude. I, I think if it comes together for him this year, it could be special. I mean, he, he looked like back in the day, like when they fresh Prince threw me out of there, <laughs> yeah. Dude, that, that's, that's what he was treating some guys like. So he, he looked pretty good on a few snaps. The guy that keeps catching my eye is too tall Miller. That's the guy. Yeah. Yep. I mean, by all accounts, he, he had a really great spring. And, and Percy Lewis. I, I thought Percy Lewis had a great game. I thought he's had a good spring because it was very easy for Percy. Um, it would have been very easy for Percy to lose that job in the spring, and he didn't. He held pretty strong, and from what I understand, has a nice little gap there. So good for him. I think he's doing well. I, I think as his body continues to improve, because I think he does still need to shed some some bad weight and continue to add good weight. Yeah, he's going to make that gap even further. Like I, I, I think his experience is really showing right now. The defense, the defensive line is going to be very important. We've got the transfer portal opening on what's today, the fourteenth. Is it? Is it the fifteenth? Yeah. Yeah. It, yes. It'll be Monday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. What happens on the 18th? Mm. Oh, that eclipse is coming back, I think. Is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, well, it, the, <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe. I'm, I'm such a trustworthy soul. You were like, oh, yeah, of course he's telling the truth. Dude, we know I'm gullible. Come on now. <laughs> Um, but no, I if maybe what happens on the 18th is we know who's going to enter the portal from Auburn side because you know you got that 48 hour hold period, so you'll probably know who's going to be leaving Auburn's roster if I had to guess. Wait a minute, explain that to me. So, when a player makes his intentions known to compliance that he would like to enter the transfer portal, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you are required within 48 hours to enter that player's name into the portal, and rarely do the, is that ever taken advantage of, right? I mean, mostly it's immediately. It's pretty straightforward. Like it, most of the time. Now, I think where it gets held up is, is guys kind of like make their intention known to the coaching staff and they're on their way down to compliance. The coach is like, oh, man, let right. me let, let me talk to you. Let's yeah. see what Me, we can meet do. me tomorrow. We've got a presentation for you. Exactly. That's typically mm-hmm. where the hold comes. It never really comes from compliance. Like that's not – from what I understand, right, right, right. The the one week where this entire week has been spring game week, I guess, yeah. like Alabama, Georgia, 
Auburn got that done a week early. From what I understand, they've, you know, I think they know who's leaving, who's not. Uh, yeah, they've had point. conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great system. If you're planning yeah, that, ahead, that's nice. A week. That's nice. Yeah. I don't know if it yeah. was on purpose because I think they had their A day game. Didn't Auburn have it early last year, too? Like, I mean, August, I mean, I uh, like, April I like 6th. It was, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, if that's the case, I would do it that way every year. Well, and my guess is in preparation for the unknown, because you can't predict everything that's going to happen. They'll leave some coach. That not every coach is going to go on the road, because I think what also happens the 18th Jeffrey is spring eval season starts. And I think coaches can go back on the road. My guess is they're going to leave some guys at home base to have conversations with people and not send everybody out on the road. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're probably going to protect the fort a little bit there. Uh, yep. I also have a Cairo appointment. Oh, do you? Is that what it is? That's what it is. Yeah, just remember, 8.30, Dr. Heron. I got to go. Let me write that down. (laughs) There there, there you go. Those two things just happen to come. All right, that keeps going, big dog. (laughs) Appreciate you, Lee. One, two, four, five. You're live. Who are we talking to? Where are you calling from? This is Ryan from Huntsville, Alabama. What's up, Ryan? Uh, Good phone, Ryan. How about you? How about you, big dog? Hey, no, I, I called in to tell you guys, um, we get two big defensive linemen for the middle of that line. Uh, I 12 wins, man. And I think that 12 wins we're going to get is going to get us in position to get us a quarterback. I say once they see the product on the field, I think the recruits will have more buy-in. I think Alvin Henderson will flip back. I think Juju Lewis will sign on. I think dominoes will start falling into place. I ain't saying we're going to win it all, but I bet we compete for SEC championship, even this year. Hmm. I, I, I wouldn't argue that. Compete? Would not argue that. Let me let me get back to you after this spring portal window. I mean, yeah, or whatever you want to call hey, it, the next portal I, window. Hey, I guarantee it. I get, I, I'm feeling it. If you go, I, I think <laughs> and you, you guys probably have, you go back and you look at Peyton's reads, you know, he's watching the safety. He's doing He's doing just a – he's running the offense so well. He can't make the biggest throws, but he can be – he can he can make the right decisions. And I think you're making the right decisions, you're going to move the ball. Well, I, I, go ahead, Cole. I'm sorry. No, I, I was going to say, Reeds aren't – if I have concerns about Peyton Thorne, Reeds haven't been it. I, I feel like he's done well at that. He's made some major mistakes for sure, but Reeds are pretty good. I, I mean – Comparatively to what we've seen at Auburn in the last couple of years, his reads are pretty good. I think my biggest issue with Peyton Thorne uh, is not his ability as a quarterback. I think it's just is what he is. He's a game manager, right? He's not a game breaker. And so to do that, he's got to take he's got to stay on schedule, on time, and you have to make sure that you're doing the things around him to put Auburn in a positive position. Because if we're going to get behind the sticks with him. I'm just not uh, – I'm not necessarily comfortable in that position. So we'll see how the offense gels around him. But I, I think he has – 100% has an opportunity to be successful, particularly with the wide receivers we've got. But everything's – the offensive strategy or the philosophy or whatever it is, it has to be cleaner this year around him. Like everything has – the organization, the structure has to be better. All right? Because if it's not and we're not on time and we're not doing the things we need to do to set him up for success – I just don't see a winnable situation for him because he's not going to win games by himself. He's got to do it within the structure of the offense. Was yeah. was Ryan talking about twenty twenty four like this year? That's you better believe it, brother. Oh, hey, <laughs> your tone's up here. I, man, it, I wouldn't be a fan if I thought we were going to lose every game. I hear Ryan, you on that, Ryan. I want to know, man, real quick. What do you when you're looking at this team right now? What is it that makes you so confident? I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I'm just I'm genuinely objectively. Yeah, well, I think he's subjectively saying war damn eagle guy. Eh? <laughs> no, well, I, I mean I tell, you, I tell you where it starts. My my blood is orange. There you so, go. There you go. Got gotcha. he, He's got too much Auburn in him. With, uh, you, you know, it's confidence, man. It's confidence. The team wise, I don't know. I I'm I'm a big edge guy, and so I see Jalen McLeod and Keldrick. Mm. Okay. You know, just kind of storming off the edge, even stopping the run. I, that just gets me excited. And then yeah. I think we're deep at linebackers. And, 
you know, hey, if the, if we need to play three in the box, we can because I think we can put our DBs on islands. Offensive line, I, they pushing guys around. You get, you know, Peyton's a game manager. Cam Coleman's a game breaker. You went out there, you got him, you got Rivaldo. Both those guys can high point it. Our running backs are deep. I, I'm just feeling it, man. Tell you what, Ryan, I'm glad I asked that question. Yeah. That's good stuff, dude. I like Ryan, Ryan's rundown, big dog. That was nice. That's what it is. I, uh, listen, to be fair, <laughs> I, on paper, that um, uh, the offense is a quarterback away on paper yep. from from being a contending or a, a, a contending SEC offense, right? I mean, uh, on paper, hey, I, don't don't sleep on Hank Brown. Let him let him learn the offense a bit more. Let him get let him get sharper. I like his I like his poise in the pocket. I mean, I know he ain't been, you know, even the A Day game, he wasn't taking a ton of, you know, he wasn't gonna take no hits. But I think he's got poise back there. I think he, I think he's showing a lot of potential. That if Peyton Thorne went down halfway through the year, I think Hank Brown would step up and we wouldn't miss a beat. I feel a little bit better about number two this year. That's number two quarterback. I I I, I am. Last year there there was no number two for me. Right. If Peyton Thorne went down. There goes the team. Mm. Boy, interesting. Say what, Where's Ron? I don't, I don't disagree. I don't Carolina. disagree with anything you said, man. I'm ready. I, Auburn's competing, yeah, I? Auburn's competing. <laughs> oh, I mean, everything he said, right. I, I think is legit. I mean, he, all of those things are working in Auburn's favor. I think. Uh, you know, Ryan there's love concern, we've well. talked about the concerns, but there are some positives. Yeah, I think we should probably talk about those maybe a little bit more. And Ryan brought them up. I think that was pretty good, man. No, and I think the reasons he mentioned is why I think Auburn's going to win seven to eight games. I just – I don't yeah. – right. Seven, eight, yeah, seven, eight games in the first ten weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, brother. Look, I, I I always appreciate when fans like yourself have that level of confidence. Yeah, oh, me too. I, I think it's what makes this sport special. It's why college football is what college football is because it is the embodiment of being able to lose yourself into something. But on this platform, for me, I, I'm not comfortable saying anything above seven to eight. I, th- I think that's just kind of where they are, what I view. Now, again, like Cole said, let's see what happens in this transfer portal window. If you add some impact pieces in places where we seem to be a little bit deficient, yeah. maybe I'll get on board with you some there, Ron. I, I, I can see my, my opinion changing. But as of today, I, I couldn't predict more than seven to eight. Like, I just wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. So, so, so forget the, the, the divisions this year, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, in order to actually compete for the SEC, you're going to have to beat A and M. You're going to have to beat LSU. You're going to have to don't Georgia. have to beat LSU because you don't play them head up. You don't. Yeah. Play. You don't play oh. LSU or or Ole Miss. Right. They're both correct. Those. You get Oklahoma. That's the team you get. So you get A and M, Oklahoma, Georgia, and Bama. Those are probably and your big four. And Missouri. Missouri is probably going to be right there too. It'll be a preseason top ten team. You've got to win three of those to even compete for the SEC. Yeah. Correct. Correct. What do y'all think? Ryan's a shower or sink guy. Oh, he's a he's a sink guy for sure. Sure. <laughs> for sure. Is no, Ryan I'm, still- a, I'm a Mac Elliott and Predator guy. Oh. <laughs> how, how how about he's, you? He's highbrow, big dog. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ryan. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Yeah, I appreciate Great call, you, man. Dude. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Great call. Call more. Hey, it's it's uh, Philip Bleedy. Okay. Okay. Philip Bleedy. Hey, um, speaking of the transfer portal, I want to just say this before we get to the next person, but I, 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 I'm kind of with a lot of the people who are negative about the transfer portal because uh, Auburn, I think even you freeze said – like I, we didn't really attack this portal the way we should have, or we, or maybe the way we could have. I think we're. I'm paraphrasing for him. That was for the first window. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those top guys that we thought uh, Auburn, you know, even some visits they had, couldn't get it done. Isaiah Rakes was a great example of that. Who, who ends up going to uh, USC now is back in the portal. I think there's something there. So, what I'm trying to say is. I'm with you about being negative about it. There's a reason why you you would think, you know, Auburn's not going to get crazy better in this portal window. They'll they'll tie up a few loose ends, but they won't get crazy good from it. I still don't think that, but I think that there's some new staff pieces that are going to help with this portal. I agree. 
Yeah, I agree. I'm thinking of Kenyatta Watson and Will Redman and and some of the other guys that they've gotten here recently. I think it's going to help. I think those guys are going to be good with this. Or well, and, and I think also you added some veteran coaches that weren't necessarily in the mix on the front end of the portal, DJ Durkin, Charles Kelly, yeah. you know, having yeah. those guys that are – coaches that have recruited in this league for so long and across the country that have yep. built in networks and relationships. You look last year, you're talking about a staff that came up almost exclusively from the G five, right? So the relationships somewhat that get you in the door so yep. you can have those conversations and get them on campus are a little bit limited. Fast forward, you're talking about guys that have verified P five backgrounds, uh, especially. And then you think about your off the field, think about Will Redmond been at LSU and Kansas for the last five years. You know he's formulated relationships and had contacts with certain guys. Um, and, and that's not me taking a shot in any way, shape, form, or fashion at AK. I think he is phenomenal at his job. I think he does a great job at what he does. But I think so much of this business is relationships, and these guys bring that more to the table as far as with the caliber of athlete that you're recruiting. For your network. Yeah, for your network, for what you're trying to get at Auburn, not Liberty at Auburn. It's interesting, too. Auburn's biggest need we know is interior D lineman, and Vontrell King-Williams is pretty well-traveled himself. You know, he's been at Eastern Michigan. He's from mm-hmm. Illinois, played in Texas. I mean, there's a lot of different things there. We've already seen guys he's brought in, like Nate Marshall on visit, who we think Auburn has made a big move with, probably because of Vontrell King-Williams. I'm interested to see, uh, you know, some of these guys that are hitting the portal that seem to make sense are from, like, a guy I put in there was from Texas. There's one from New York. Usually you would just kind of count those guys out for Auburn. Like, no, nah, that, that's not going to happen. They're, they're too far from home. Well, if they had a familiar face, somebody that's been around a little bit, Vontrell King-Williams has. I don't know. That's just I'm looking at some of those kind of factors this time. Take it back a year. Justin Rogers from Kentucky. The linchpin on that oh, one yeah. was Vontrell King-Williams. He right. was the man in that recruitment because the relationship he developed with him when he was at Eastern Michigan. So absolutely, you're right about that, Cole. He's his own buster for Auburn with having those those deep ties to the Midwest that you might not have had otherwise, for sure. Definitely. Good stuff, Brian. Appreciate you, buddy. 2822, you're live. Who are we talking to? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Cole from Knoxville. Cole from Rocksville. What's on your mind tonight, big dog? Hey, just a couple just a couple questions for you guys. I'm not not ready to say uh that we're gonna win twelve games like Ryan was, but I, I, <laughs> I it'd be awesome if we did. I was gonna ask what kind of year do you guys think that Peyton needs to have for Auburn to have a top fifteen finish okay. outside the playoffs? Um, not top 12 yet, but having a, a much improved year, um, you know, don't get, not making the leap to 12 wins, but maybe, you know, 10, um, if everything goes right, what kind of year do you think Peyton has to have for, for that to happen? And then, uh, last question, and then I'll jump off and let you guys talk. Um, who do you think the Cam Coleman of this class, 2025 class, could be, if it's not Juju Lewis, who do you think it could be? A five-star guy that we snag, maybe we flip. Um, you may not have enough intel for that yet, but just as of right now, who would you say that would be? Probably come up with some potentials. But, uh, Cole, sink or shower? Oh, sink, man. You're more of a jail guy, aren't you? Hey, dude, dude, I'm you know I'm more along the lines like if my grandpa didn't use it, I probably don't need to use it. I hear you, Cole. <laughs> so I hear you. Arkansas or something like that. We don't need to be putting it on our face, Cole. So I still use my deodorant as my aftershave. Baby. And I use his baking soda, big dog. Yeah, <laughs> with a little with a brush, baking soda. <laughs> and that what? Yeah, baking soda. Hell, I. I I remember as a child that was it was there was a little brush and thing with some baking soda and some I think you put baking soda in water. That's what they used to shave with back in the day. Uh, you lost me on that yeah, one. I, I, I was gonna say, man, I and I'm I'm all about some old school lather, but I did not know it was baking <laughs> soda, my man. I'm gonna look it up. 
Yeah. I'm not All on right. the baking soda train. All right. All right. Let's see. For, so, what's this? Barbasol. Some what? Barbasol. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, ru- the rusted what tin can. Bar- yeah. Y'all ever had a barber use like the blade on you? Yeah. I have yeah. not, man. I have always wanted to do that, but I have never That's done That's nice. That. So, no, it's nice. My, mine uses like the electric to trim up my beard. And then yeah. we'll use the blade to do my cheeks and, and neck and everything like that. Get that line. Yep. Yeah, I used to go to a uh, I used to go to a barber. Her name was Ruthie. She was actually a woman barber from Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> she used to do it. it I fantastic. bet she knew how to make that work, son. It was great. Yeah. So it's actually, cool. my wife, who tells me in beauty school, you don't learn men's haircuts. I've uh, taken her to Ruthie a few times, and Ruthie showed her a few things. So, okay, there you go, there you go. What right, you so got, top Jaylee? fifteen. Top fifteen. Uh, I'm looking at it. It, it, it is baking soda and water. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I've just never heard. I it. mean, yeah, for sure. I just what, never did, what did people it. use before shaving cream? Bro, your but guess also, is as good as mine. Listen. I'm I'm curious, you know, did y'all go to a school that made you shave in high school, junior I didn't high? Have to shave till I was thirty, bro. I'm in the military. I got to shave every day. You know what I mean? Like I, I, <laughs> the school I, I went to, school to that that you, oh yeah, I, I wasn't even talking to you, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, if you showed up with any facial hair at my school, they they'd make you go dry shave it with a one blade Gillette. Mm-hmm. That's awful. Awful. Yeah, I had a drill sergeant that loved to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty rough. Don't don't dry you, shave it. Don't do that. No, nah, man, that, that that's rough business. Uh, but I mean, dude, I couldn't grow facially until I was like sixteen. So you know, I didn't really have that issue. <laughs> okay, Cole. Let's yes. get back to Cole. Oh, Cole's question. Sorry. Yeah, so, I, uh, to be top fifteen, what's the record got to be? Go ahead, you, Alan. You said you could do this in three or four words. I can do this. I what does Peyton Thorne have to produce for Auburn right. to be at that level? Michigan State 2021. That's what he's got to be yeah. for for Auburn to be 10 wins. That's the performance he's got to provide. And I will turn it over to you guys, but that's that's bottom line to me. He's you think 10 wins games. is top 15? Yes. Do you think nine wins is top 15? Maybe. Given Auburn's schedule. Yeah. Possibly. The schedule. It, <laughs> Who are the nine wins? I think that's the question. Like if well, you, if you upset a Georgia or a Bama, then you're probably top fifteen at nine wins. If you get right. nine wins on this schedule, that means you've beaten somebody they don't expect you Auburn to beat. Mm-hmm. Probably For sure. Couple of them. But, yeah. Definitely. You had to beat probably I if you're gonna get to nine, you're gonna have to win all the ones you're supposed to. So there's six that you're sh- that you should win. So you're four and then nine three of the five that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, so your three non conference is your four non conference, then you got to beat Arkansas, you got to beat Vanderbilt, so that gets you to six, Oklahoma, Kentucky, A and M, that gets you to nine, and then to get to ten, you got to knock off one of Missouri, Georgia or Alabama, Georgia or Alabama. That'd be tough. It'd be real tough. Twenty twenty one. All right, the Cam Coleman of this year's class, a five star. That could end up in Auburn's class. The headliner. I got one in mind. Did he say besides Juju Lewis? Yes. Besides, I think so. yeah. Besides Juju, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking of a guy who has already committed elsewhere, because that would line up pretty well with the Cam Coleman. Because look, Cam Coleman would have been big no matter what happened. But the fact that it, it was over. Hey, when he committed to Texas A&M, people were. We're, we're ready to be done with him. Don't even recruit that guy. I don't want to see that, that guy in Auburn's class. And then, of course, <laughs> when it comes down to it, oh, we got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think the guy's name offered. We don't hear a lot about him right now. He didn't visit Auburn this spring. But I think Ohio State's got a long way to go to hold on to him, just like we were talking about earlier in the show with keeping a commitment that long, especially one from way out of state like that. Uh, and I think Auburn's not going to quit on him. So that'll be my pick on this question. That's yeah. a good one. That's a really good one. All 
Where's Zion Grady at in the rankings? He's up there. He's pretty he's high. Up there, up oh. there. Yeah, he's, See, top what, he's top 100, but not five star. He Maybe is, he's, he's number 63. 63, yeah. But uh, let's see. ESPN's got him 45. On three, he's got him 166. Not crazy about him. But one Maybe. guy that came to my mind is Isaiah yeah. Gibson. Oh, yeah, well, man. That's I just saw his one. name and thought that too. That and then obviously Josh Petty and Andrew Babalola are two that are absolutely, sure, sure. you know, should be mentioned there. <laughs> the thing about this question, and this is what my mind went to, even a guy like Hussein Longstreet that Auburn did not land today, and of course they wanted to, he's from California. It's not like, oh, well, if Auburn misses him, that's just the worst thing ever. It, it, look, I mean, you don't ever want to – we're not talking almost here. You can't do almost in recruiting. That's not going to work. But a guy from California that you were that close to, you almost got him. It's interesting. I, I think it, when it we came to Cam Coleman, even Alvin Henderson, it's like, this guy's in your backyard. It's embarrassing to lose him. It's not as embarrassing to lose Hussein Longstreet. Or an Andrew Babalola or Brody Scholl or some of these other five stars Auburn's in on. But losing a guy like Neem offered to Ohio State would sting. Alvin Henderson, I know what we talk about in our circle in the corner. You know, everybody's kind of like, eh, whatever. But I, you know, I run our Facebook page and the, the large majority of the Auburn, you know, fan base was like, what? Are you kidding? You know, never heard of that he might be going to Penn State, never heard he might be going somewhere else, just freaking out. The freak out was unreal. So there's still that going on with a guy like Alvin Henderson. It's because they're from in-state. When they see in-state, it's like, oh, you can't lose. That's embarrassing. You know, so it's a little different when it's a guy from out of state. Well, Kent Coleman wasn't a five star at this point either, though, was he? In no. April? no. That's yeah. why I was taking my search yeah. past the top 50. Because I was you, like a guy should. like, a guy like C.J. Wiley, maybe yep. Yep. is someone who's skyrocketed and who's who you guys talked about on Thursday is someone who's built a lot like Cam Coleman. Mm -hmm. hey, this guy's a five star, but what about the kid from Mississippi? Is it Cunningham? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that's a that's a perfect one. That'd be a big one. Yeah, it is. It sure is. Both Look, of those are good, good names to throw out there. Yeah, and, and that's. I think this fan base is still adjusting somewhat to. It, high-end recruiting coming out let's be honest here when coach harson and his staff were here it was not the level of recruiting that it needs to be to be championship caliber and right. even in the, the waning years of the gus era the recruitments you were able to get in on were not the caliber that needed to be well now you're in high-end recruiting okay and this is what it feels like i mean it's a john claude van damme blood sport bro you know what I mean? Like sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're not, but it's the ride. Okay. And nothing sells hope and despair in the same day, like high end recruiting. And that's what you just experienced in these last two recruitments with Hussan Longstreet and Alvin. So yep. prepare for the highs because they're going to come. All right. It's, it's a wave that's going to come with that. And don't find yourself so emotional about each and every recruitment and understand that nothing's done in today's age of NIL. All right. Nothing is done. I promise you. I know that a lot of people get, paranoid about that kids have not made final decisions they have told you who their leader is and that is including kids in auburn's class okay they have said this is who my leader is today but until they sign a national letter of intent it's not done okay now it may change your probability but i think auburn's still very much alive with a lot of these guys it's also you want to trust your staff to nail their evals too because there's a you could name a and m you could name auburn under gus there were the bus rate was pretty high yeah for some of those staffs yep. and you don't want to be just be landing no offense to these guys but like the byron cowards of the world calvin ashley's you much rather would have landed a high four star who started for three years than yep. win signing day and, and get one of the five stars that don't pan out to be a five star no, being nails on evals is a real thing, man. Yeah, and that that piece has to be there. And I think, Jeffrey, what would you call? You're a handicap specialist. What would you say the hit rate needs to be to be championship level? Like fifty percent? You think you need to hit on fifty percent of every class you bring in? 
Hmm. Hmm. Does that include transfer portal class? I mean, sure. It's, so it's like combining high school and transfer portal together. Yeah. Like, okay. Tra- my my trans- first thought was transfer yeah. portal implies that you may have missed on some of your high school guys. Yeah. Maybe. Well, let's take, for instance, this class, 2024 class. Right. Of how many, I've got it on the, the corner, how many, 28. And then that's including, let's see, that's 24. So 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So 28 scholarship additions coming from the 2024 class, a lot of them. Is that right? Yeah. 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 28. So you've got a half would be 14. Man, that's a lot. That's a lot of bus. I, I, I would almost, I would say two out of three. Okay. So about your hit 60, rate. 65-ish. 70. 70 at the high end. And then yeah. let's define hit. 2D. The potential. Impact, impact player. Does it, have, does it vary? Multi-year starter. Okay. So even a two-year, even a guy who red shirts and then earns his stripes for two years on special teams, and then becomes a two-year starter. I don't care where he goes in the draft. I think I, I think a multi-year starter, a two-year starter, or better. Yeah. Okay. I think that I think that is a I think that's a fair definition of what hit is. Yeah, I would think that's a hit. if if uh, what's the kid from Lo Chipoca? Uh, good, good kid, real good. JC Harden. Harden. A kid like a small school guy like that earns the stripes on special teams for a couple of years and then ends up starting for two years. Monte was, was Monte Pitts. I don't know why I always think they're built a lot. That's why. I, I guess what a developmental guy to me, if he turns out to be a two year starter and he was a high three star, that's a hit, big dog. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I don't Definitely. care what he's ranked. If he's a two year starter, that's a hit. Now, the problem with and talking about Cole's microwave society is you get a five star and it takes him three years to get on the field. Oh, he's a bust. Yeah. He's a bust. No, he's not. Uh, if he's a multi year starter for you, and, and, and that's a hit for me. So, so we're defining what this hypothetical situation. I don't even know if it's hypothetical, but two out of three multi year starters. Fair. So, 21. Damn, my math sucks. I'm doing it by fours now. So three are going to 28, nine times. Nine times three is 27. So we'll just say nine is one third. So you need to get 19, 18 to 19 multi year starters out of this class. Yeah. And I think your hit rate for transfers might need to be higher than that, just personally. I agree. Because you should build your foundation through the high school ranks. But when you look at the most successful teams in college football, look at Florida State's hit rate for transfers on last year's team. It's close to like 85, 90%. And they were the Jared versus the Keon Coleman's. When you flip it, look at look at the wide receivers that Auburn landed yep. compared to what Florida State brought in. And that was really the a huge difference between those teams. Same with the, the, Texas. The, the quarterback nailed nailed it, even though he was a you know the number one player in the country. But look at Mitchell coming from Georgia and what he ended up producing yeah, for yeah. Texas as a thousand yard receiver. I think your hit rate for transfer portal has got to be higher than that. I I agree. Yeah. Well, I, th- oh, I yeah, think, definitely. I think it depends on the amount you bring in, obviously, because if you're like Colorado and everything you bring in is out of the transfer portal, well, then obviously your margin for error is a little bit different. True. But if you're more of a traditional, say, SEC team that's not not Lane Kiffin, because they, sure. You know what I mean? Like, and look, Lane's successful. I'm not knocking him for it. He's got the he he understands his his role there at Ole Miss, and, and they play into it, man. But I'm with you. It, in our situation, Zach, for the minimal numbers you're trying to bring in, because I don't think Hugh Freeze wants to live in that 15, you know, plus right. transfer portal every year. Like, I, I don't think that's what he wants to do. He wants to be more in that 5 to 10 range. Like, I, I think that's where he feels more comfortable. Um, all right, let's get to our last two callers tonight. We probably had them holding a little too long. Get to us, Zach. Five zero one three. You're live. Who are we talking to? Where are you calling from? The conference has been locked. Uh, Don, Don from uh, Homewood, Alabama. Pulpwood. Homewood. Oh, Pulpwood was much cooler. <laughs> yeah, no, Birmingham Metro area, guys. Yeah, my brother lives over there. I used to beat up people from Homewood. 
<laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, fellas, just to let you know, I'm I'm 63 and been keeping up with Auburn recruiting since uh, the early 80s. And you guys, I don't know if you guys are remember or not, but the first recruiting analyst that you had back in the days was Forrest Davis. Yep. Sure. Yep. And everything. And I used to get his annual every year, but I always keep up with Auburn. But just want to let you know how good of a job you guys do. And my question of the night is dealing with the two Pagans brothers from uh, – Thompson and Alabaster. Yeah. What are y'all yeah. thinking about getting them as a package deal? I know that the, the older one just uh, entered the transfer portal out of USC. What are y'all's feelings on getting both of them? Hey, Don, fantastic. Fantastic yeah. question. Good call. Yeah. De- Don is definitely a sink guy, by the way. Yes, <laughs> for sure. All right. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate you, Don. All right. Uh, Anquan Figgins yes. and Traquan Figgins. Traquan Figgins is uh, uh, USC defensive back. He's announced his intentions to enter the transfer portal. He will officially go in there tomorrow, presumably. And then Anquan Figgins is his younger brother, four-star safety from Thompson, who was originally committed to USC. USC. There you go. So there's definitely some brotherly love there. They obviously had some intentions to go to the same school. And when Anquan has decommitted, now Traquan's leaving, you would think they end up at the same school. Presumably, I would. Yeah. Uh, which is, I think it's great news for Auburn. Uh, I felt Anquan was going to end up at Auburn. I think we all have. Uh, and now with his brother entering the transfer portal, I would say, Don, in my opinion – it's more likely they both end up at Auburn than the field. Concur. Yep. Cole? No, I, I – um, you got the Charles Kelly thing going on as well. Absolutely. That's where I'm looking at really hard because, you know, I don't know if Charles actually got to coach Traquan at Alabama, but uh, he definitely recruited him. I think That's it's right. on Traquan his – signed with Bama, didn't he? He did, he coached him, so he was at Bama for 2022, he SC him. for 2023. So Charles coached him because Charles's last year at Alabama was 2022, and then he went to Colorado okay. for last year. That, that's Charles a, is very close with that family. That's a yes. big deal to me. In this, when yeah, when I said Charles Kelly, that's this is the the giving you a leg up in the transfer portal. This is exactly what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, quick question good, for y'all. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got curious with uh, the 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 big transfer portal class that Auburn brought in 2023, which was, you know, Justin Rogers, Caleb Burton. Um, what would y'all say is a hit for that particular situation where you had to bring in 22 guys? That's how many they brought in for the portal. That's tough, man. You you, you okay, so selective. A guy I, I like would, that a guy like Lawrence man. Johnson. Lawrence Johnson played a little bit, but he wasn't a starter. Is that still considered a good pickup in the portal? I I think so because he he filled the role they brought him in. To Absolutely. Field. Is he okay. a depth piece? Are you bringing him in as a depth piece? Yes. In that case, was give me he like a depth piece. Give me like three minutes, and I'll get your percentage on how many hits there were in that class. Yeah, I completely agree, Alan. What was yeah. he, what was their intentions of bringing him in? Right, like uh, you can, you can debate whether or not Justin Rogers was a hit, okay? But to me, Lawrence Johnson, you knew what that kid was when you brought him in. You brought him in to be a depth piece. He absolutely contributed. He was a hit, in my opinion. The misses for me are the wide receivers: Shane Hooks miss, Nick Marner miss. Uh, who was the other one? Uh. uh we oh, just talked uh, about him earlier. Yeah. So you said shorter. Shorter. Miss. Yep. All those okay, cats so miss, miss, miss. But there wasn't so a based on, to. Based on this, based on what we're saying is a hit here, 63-ish, 65% is what you hit on out of those that's 22. A, that's a great percentage for those that big of a group. Yeah. I think that's, so. that's what everybody's saying, 65. Now, Zach, you said – um, more like 80 is what you really ideally want to hit in your On a portal. smaller number. If your scale's smaller, right. You want yeah. to hit 8 out of 10. 
Yeah, I think hitting 65% in year one when you're still assembling a staff and trying to just basically scrap together what you can, I, I think that's pretty good. In this class, I think the number does need to be more 80. You had your feet set. You knew what you were looking at moving into this year, what your needs were and probably had feelers as to who was getting into the portal. So does, does does your standard change for this class now that you've gotten your feet under you? you, yes. you know, okay, so just sure. a reminder, your transfer portal addition so far, Percy Lewis, just because you know how – we know what we're hearing about him after spring, what we've seen from him. Yep. Percy Lewis. So far, so good. Jaron Thompson. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sam Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rico Walker, maybe more of a down the line guy, but yeah, we'll have to wait. He's, he's filling the need that he was brought in to do to fill. Yep. So so far right. so good. Yeah. Gage Keys. Um. Trill Carter. Yes. I mean, you're yeah. going to need both of those guys, no matter how you slice it. Yep. Dorian Mausi. Yes. Rob Lewis. Yes. And Antonio Robert Kite. Is. No, he's not. It, it, I mean, not not from the buzz I've heard. Okay. So what is that? Seven out of eight? Eight out of yeah. nine, nine out of ten, whatever it was. Either way, it's 80%. Here's my question to you. Without knowing what happens to Peyton Thorne this year, has so far, so so far, has he been a hit or a miss? Ooh. Ooh. He's been a oh. miss to this point. Yeah. Now, he has a chance to remedy that moving into this year. Like, he's got a chance to really – to flip that on its head, if he goes out and throws for yeah. 20, 2,700 yards, Definitely. there's no way. Yeah, there's no way you can look at last year with what the expectation was and think that the 1,900 yards I think he ended up with is. Does he does he have the receiving core that he had at Michigan State in 2021? Probably not quite. It's it's on the way, I would say, not quite there. So nothing but opportunity ahead here, man. That's. That's that's encouraging, at least. His tight end might be better as far as a pure pass receiver. Yeah. I would say Cam Coleman can probably give you what you got out of um, – Keon Coleman. Yeah, out of Keon Coleman. Mm -hmm. But you don't have Jaden Reed. That's, that's the difference, in my opinion. And, yeah, and as I much agree. as I love Lewis, and I think that kid's going to be really good, he's not Jaden Reed, not in my opinion. Now, I could be mm -hmm. wrong. I could be proved significantly wrong here. I think the running back room at Auburn is deeper, but I don't think there's a running back near as good as Kenneth Walker either. No. Right. Right. That dude was yeah. good. I'm, yeah, he's very good. He's very good. Yeah. And been very good in the NFL. So <laughs> Extremely good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, and obviously, we again, this is speculation off what we saw last year. What happens if Damari Austin or Dark West Hunter or Jeremiah Cobb you know what I mean? It, it transitions into something that we're not expecting at this point. You never, you don't know year to year how, how a kid's going to grow and develop sometimes. But Kenneth yeah. Walker was something special for sure. Well, also too, like, I, listen, I'm not going to take nothing away from Kenneth Walker. And, and Cole can preach to the, how unique this is. That year at Michigan State, they played 10 to 11 offensive linemen every single game. And they wow. rotated during the game because they were so deep and so good. Third down package. <laughs> Didn't know that. Yeah. So that, there's certainly not many guys in the country who can do that. All right. Let's I mean, see. That you got the last caller. Last caller. Make it a good five one. two <laughs> zero two. You're live. Who are we talking to? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Darren down in Nashville. How about Nashville? You, How about you, big Nashville. dog? Nice feel, home of. Uh, I got it. I got okay. Jeffrey Eli soap, Stove. or Barbersaw and Jail Soap. So you yeah, yeah. soap. Was it last yeah. soap? It, that's yeah. Yeah, the, the recipe. And then I, I get saw. like that. Get see, I get that that electric. They do that thing, and then they tighten me up with a with a regular Gillette razor. What are they tighten it up from there? They 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 line you up with the Gillette razor. Mm. No, mine's just a blade. Yeah, straight razor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can do a straight razor, but I don't. I just use that Gillette with that little. You know, it's got. Oh, five you do. I thought you meant at the barber shop. Imagine him. Uh, yeah. Yes, oh, well, let me ask you this: How yeah. many days do you use that razor? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Like, like a week or two. Oh, it, till till it you know starts tugging on everything, then you got yeah. you got to ditch it. Then you know, got to get money's worth out of it. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> kind of like a towel. <laughs> so, you know, we've been talking, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stoke the fire a little bit from what Ryan was saying. Was uh, stoke uh, I don't know that 12 wins is gonna be there. Nine or ten, I can, I, I, I'm, I'm, I can almost get there. Let me tell you, here's why. Y'all are quick with the keyboards. Does schedule mean anything? Does do you think Absolutely. people at the right time on your schedule is important? Absolutely. Or Absolutely kind of sways the balance of things sometimes. Have you looked at who Oklahoma's playing before they come to Auburn for their first SEC out of out of conference? I mean out of in you know out into another stadium. That's Georgia, right? right? Tennessee. Tennessee. Nope, playing Tennessee. Oh. Their brethren of uh, Heisman Trophy head coach coming from bringing Tennessee to town to Oklahoma before they come to Auburn. Okay, Tennessee Just, at home. You know who Georgia's playing the week before they play Auburn. Or Auburn goes to Georgia. They're probably on the road, aren't they? Alabama. Alabama. Are the you Bammer. serious? They're the Bammer mm-hmm. that week. They got or Alabama Auburn. and Auburn back to back? Yes, sir. Huh. And what about what about Alabama? Who does Alabama play? O- Oklahoma, right? LSU. Or yeah. It's one of the No, they're at Oklahoma. They're at yeah. Oklahoma. Okay. Before Auburn. I think that's big, y'all. I think those kind of games before you – look, we've done it for years, right? Yes. Auburn sat there at May Men's Corner and played Texas A&M, Georgia, Alabama. Then you got to go back. If you win the SEC, play Georgia again. These teams now are having to play somebody before us, even A&M. Texas A&M, we are at A&M that week. Guess what their next game is? Texas. I mean, do you think they really care about playing Auburn that week? It's all about getting back to Texas and playing that rival game again. Who's Auburn? Who cares? It's Texas, Texas A&M. So I just think that some of what's happening, and it's the portal that, like Cole said, if we do, and, and, and Alan may have said this, but if we do pick up that double teamer in the middle for a nose tackle or whatever, our schedule, y'all, I know it's still tough at Missouri, at Kentucky, I get it, but – uh, oh, by the way, Missouri, if y'all seen Murder's Row, I mean, Auburn, Alabama, uh, you know, I don't know, Georgia, Kentucky, USC, uh, it's, it's crazy. I say USC. Yeah, right. if, if Eli uh, has the wrong kind of injuries, I that still believe that there's some of that, and I, I didn't know. I hadn't heard y'all say a lot about that, but I, I think that that's going to play into our year. It may be worth one to two wins at that point. I think that's fair. I think that's very fair. And it, it, Vegas gives the number at seven and a half, right? That's why I've said eight because I think you do get one of those games. That's kind of where I'm at with it. I th- I think that eight is legitimately on the table because the schedule does play a factor in that. I mean, I, I, I you got six. Can you find two more? That's kind of where. Like I honestly believe there's no way. You, well, I say that <laughs> there's no way you should lose to Vanderbilt. There's no way you should lose to Arkansas. Like th- those games, you should 100 percent win. There's no yep. way Cal should come into Auburn and then you play three other cupcakes. Um, New Mexico State not being one of those. So, you know what I mean? New Mexico without the state. Yes, New Mexico without the state, not the same. Though we do play Pavia again this year. He just happens to uh, to play for it's Vanderbilt now. New Mexico State. Yep. Yeah, game. Alabama without Saban is not the same Alabama. I don't care how good y'all think Kalen DeBoer is. He still ain't the process. He still ain't the same caller. He still don't say I'm the same uh, head coaches that are rehabilitating around him. Sorry. I just don't think in the in those moments that that are pressure. Listen, this guy loses two games, y'all. Y'all know I, I'm old enough. I know when Bear left and, and Perkins came in. Mm-hmm. Listen, it two games. He loses two games to I mean, it doesn't matter. Georgia already. I, I don't know that Alabama's gonna beat Georgia. And that's a game that they're they pretty well have owned Georgia over the last few years in the conference championship and everything. It will turn up the heat so fast on Kalen Bohr, he has no clue what he has just stepped into. He doesn't. No more than Brian Harson knew what he was doing at all. And I'll leave with that, y'all. I know I'm the last caller. Hey, I enjoyed it. Enjoy the show. Y'all do a great job. And War Eagle. Appreciate you, dear. What a great way to end it, man. I had no doubt, dude. That's a great call.
with, with all the talk tonight of of the floor and ceiling of this football team, curious, I, Alan. I, th- I think I remember talking with you when when Isaiah Rakes was a big target for Auburn. We liked yep. him. I liked. I thought he was re- very good for Texas A and M's defense right there as the nose guard when he'd go three front. Would make sense if DJ Durkin wanted him back as his nose guard. Let's say you land him, or maybe even Philip uh, Bleedy. Sure. Does it change anything for you? Are you feeling better? Are you, I mean, obviously you're feeling a little bit better. Does it change your record? Yes, slightly. I think any increased interior defensive line depth because I you I, – I think you're talking about a half game, every play, every piece you add in no my kidding. opinion. Especially Isaiah Rakes as a pure nose to be yep. able to roll in there with Trill Carter and Jason Jones, I feel significantly better about that position. Now, none of those guys are all stars. Okay, right, right. They don't have to be. They got to go in there. If you got three guys you can roll through that can all play that position, can you give me twenty snaps? Everything you got. That's what I need from you. I need twenty Easy. snaps. Yeah, twenty snaps. Everything you got, roll through. Let's do load management. Now, can you also do the same thing at three tech? Well, you got one piece right now. Probably depends on if if Bobby Travis can slide over and play the three some, or can you pick up another one? What do you get out of DJ Reed? Like there's some, there's some unknowns to me at at the three tech spot. Right. But if you're able to add that big nose guard, yeah, I, I think that's worth a half game. You add another three tech that's, you know, they can they can legitimately play. That's worth another half game, in my opinion. So you're talking about a full game's worth of difference. You had those two players. Well, we know Auburn's going to be hot and heavy over Philip Bleedy. They're going to be hot and heavy over uh, Isaiah Rakes. Who did he not visit last year? He did. Yeah, he did. It, it wasn't even last year. It was. Uh, well, it was last, last technically last year. It was December, yeah, right? It was December. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. He was part of that big wave of uh, portal players that visited this year. Every day, for December. Yeah. What well, was he December or January? Because I can't remember when did when did he come in? Because we had I think Rakes and then the kid that went to Florida State from West Virginia came in in January. I'm pretty sure he was one of the last OBs <laughs> because you know how they put the names on the cars. Jeffrey? Yeah, 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 yeah. They had Rakes on there until the other day when they had their other. Their first OV since all that, which was Longstreet and Wiley. Uh, Isaiah Rakes in Auburn for official visit. Jeffrey Lee, January the 3rd. So this year. So he's going to come four months ago. If you could potentially get him back on campus, and I think there's probably traction there. It would be shocking if not, right? That would be shocking. I I think you got to probably watch for Syracuse, where his former defensive line coach, Elijah Robinson, is now the defensive coordinator at Syracuse. There's obviously a big – Bond there. That kid's from New Jersey originally, if I remember correctly. So that's one I'm paying attention to. But that could happen. That could happen. For sure. Yeah, I mean, there's also connections to Auburn too with DJ Durkin, the assistant defensive line coach who was at Texas A&M, now over at Auburn. So you've got that connection as well. Multiple other staffers that came over from A&M that I think were with DJ there. So it's going to be interesting, man. Uh, it, I, he would 100% be a target for me. I mean, and, and that's. Yeah. Because I don't know what you're going to see in the spring portal. I know a lot of these national guys are saying, oh, the spring portal is going to be huge. And maybe it will be. I just got to see it to believe it, man, because no spring portal since the the portal era has started. Now, you didn't have the double transfer either. And that's what a lot of these people are thinking. Now, double transfers, I mean, shit, they just passed a rule. I think that you can transfer as many times as you want, so long as you're academically eligible. Or it's soon to pass. It's pretty much what it is already. I mean, to a point. Yeah. Well, it's just it's a court injunction that's allowing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Versus an actual rule, they're going to rubber stamp a rule because they mm-hmm. realize they can't do anything about it. What were the uh, what were the spring additions? Was it was Burton one? Burton was one, and McLeod was the big one. McLeod was the one that you added, and then obviously the linebacker from North Texas. I'm trying to think of his name. Dylan Cinda was another Dylan, one. Dylan Cinda like got hit. What he had in like January. August, July, yeah. July, yeah. He was oh, having the summer That's right. Yeah, Steve they got him. Sings. I believe Steve Sings was Peyton Thorne, obviously. 
Yeah. Uh, McLeod, Jair yep. Shorter, Larry Nixon. Larry Shane Nixon's Hooks, the one I'm thinking of. Jaden Muskrat. Yeah, I mean, some value picks, but the ones that stick out to you are obviously Jalen McLeod, Peyton Thorne. Yeah, yeah. Those two are the big ones. Hey, real quick to end the show, talk about the influx of talent that Auburn needs to bring in. How many do you see leaving? I'll set the over-under at – I'll set the over-under at six and a half. Under. I, I do think under on that. I'm not going to go by position. I think two from the wide receiver room. I think one from the defensive back room. Hey, Poss- I did the same thing you did, big dog. Some untimely know. balloons talking about this. I, I thought his balloons went to your screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think possibly a quarterback, though nothing's done there. I, mean, I, I don't have any intel, but I think possibly a quarterback. So we're up to four. It's less. I think it's going to be less than I thought it was. At line. First. And maybe a running back. I don't see. Defense. I don't see anybody from the defensive line jumping in today. Not that I. Maybe I mean it depends on who you bring in, right? Because if guys think their spot was is gotten, so I think that's subject to change as you bring in bodies. So you may get above six and a half if you lose all those other ones because. What happens with Brian Batiste? Does he decide to get into the portal? You know what I mean? Like as, as a running back and, and shop around, does Holden decide or Hank decide, you know what, I want to look elsewhere? Um, not saying those guys are. I'm just saying those are positions. Yeah. Wide receiver, I feel for certain that one or two guys are absolutely getting into the portal. Man, I mean, I think it's going to be around six or seven. I think you – I mean, and then a defensive back. So, I, I'm at five right now, like just of what's possible. And then you don't – the unexpected attrition. And then, like you said, Jeffrey, once you start to recruit that position and guys think you recruited over my head, well, now I you, – you get one of two mentalities, right? All right, I'm about to stick this thing out and fight. That's right. I'm or I'm going to go someplace else and play, especially with it still – like. You have guys that were recruited by Brian Hart. Hell, you have guys that were recruited by Gus that are still in this roster. Wow. That's true. Like, wow. I mean, think about Wesley Steiner. Mm-hmm. Luke Deal. Luke Brandon Deal. Frazier. Yeah. Wow. Tate so, Johnson? Was Tate Johnson one? I yes. So. You know. Man, that's crazy. Jeremiah Wright. Zachivus Walker. Yes. Guys that were recruited by Gus. So Three two- head coaches in their career. Correct. Mm -hmm. At what point did they say, hey, man, I'm not starting. I want to go someplace for my last year and get significant snaps. And they may not say that. They may say, you know what, I love Auburn. This is where I want to be. And the degree from Auburn and the the opportunity to play with my guys one last time, that's worth it, man. Being able to – Didn't the tight end do that? Yeah. One of the – the Fromm brothers. Well, no, I guess Sam, yeah. No, it was. It was Fromm is who yeah. I'm thinking of. Yeah, he went to Georgia Southern and said, you know what, I, I love my experience at Auburn. I've graduated from Auburn, but I want to go get significant snaps right. my last year. Right. Does that happen to one of these guys in the spring? And don't you respect that? Absolutely. More? Good for you. Yeah. You you so, have done what you, you have done. You have fulfilled your obligations, commitment to Auburn University. Go go be you, big dog. Javarius Johnson's doing that, right? He's graduated from Auburn this uh, this spring. He's already scheduled an official visit for UCF, which if I, I've had him penciled there for a while now, given my information. He just needs to finish his schoolwork, didn't he? he? Needs to finish his schoolwork. Good for him, man. Go to Orlando, and I hope that you're featured in that offense in a way that helps you be successful. Oh, I tell you what. Things could this, this transfer portal is going to be fun. We'll end it there. But uh, y'all, y- y'all keep track of Auburn Live all week. We're going to be tra- uh, keeping track of the outs, the ins, the visits, the offers, the interest shown. There's going to be a lot of new names pop on, pop up in the transfer target portal tracker, which will start this week. And, uh, of course, we've already got visits coming in, so we'll be tracking all of that too. Uh, don't forget, if you're in or around Auburn, Oklahoma, County, Looking for some help? 
for real estate. Give her a call. Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group, 334-704-4442. Don't be confused because she's a five-star realtor. Give her a call. Tell her we sent you. All right. Hey, great show tonight. Oh, big Kevin from Wilmer getting us started off, for, I think, for the fourth week in a row. Big dog, our yeah. leadoff man, the star of the show. Ace is full. I hear you, big dog. Yeah. Man of his words that I'm calling. Yep. He sure did. Good question. Uh, let's see, we had Braden. We had, I mean, we had some great questions, discussion, discussions, all kind of stuff tonight. Great show tonight. Braden, uh, Lee Carter, our buddy Lee. Ryan. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, he might get caller the night for me. He was. Uh, he did, man. He dropped some knowledge, but he was positive. He was very positive, and I know people want to call him Sunshine Pumper, but he had good info too. Bro, I was Wolf of Wall Street when he got there. I was like, da da da. Yeah, right. Yeah, da da da. Yeah, he was great. Cole from Knoxville was fantastic. Uh, Don from Homewood was fantastic. I thought myself, Darren from Niceville, home of Eli Stone. Yeah, he also was, good. I, I love the schedule. It, uh, insight he had there on the opponents i thought that was a fantastic call to end the show we appreciate everybody calling in tonight and gracing us with your presence we will be back wednesday morning with a recruiting show we'll be going uh in depth on all the latest news in the transfer portal as well as the high school recruiting maybe a uh a juco prospect or two uh, yeah. but we will we will be back uh, wednesday morning look for us of course we'll be back next sunday night well, uh, appreciate everybody listening. We appreciate everybody watching. We truly do. Uh, for Cole, for Zach in the back, who came to the front, and Mr. Allen Head, I'm Jeffrey Lee. May y'all stay out of the left lane. See ya. <laughs>